clear. Cork, Waterford. <laughs> Tokyo, we're coming. And then back up by the winning post. Cooked up more now than about uh, 250 meters to go. And he has closed the gap. Still about 70 meters. And there comes John Tracy, the greatest distance runner we have ever produced. And certainly one of the greatest in the world of all time. The first man since the 40s to be winning this race for two successive years. He's got his hands in the air. He knows it's there. This 25,000 crowd is going delirious with excitement as John Tracy comes with only 50 yards to the finish. The Soviet is behind Bentley with Malinowski, two of the great distance runners in the world. We're in Waterford today at Dungarvan for the Dungarvan 10 mile which is probably my favourite race. I think 10 miles are perfect, especially for doing Martin training, for um, seeing where your fitness. And we're four weeks out from Tokyo and um, today I'm ready to give a, a good lash and see, see where I am because I haven't been feeling the best I suppose. I did that 10k and uh, I haven't been, I didn't feel strong going into it so today I'm I won't say I'm feeling good, but I'm not feeling bad. So for me, that means I can go hard. And um, that's what I'm gonna do today. So it's just a matter of getting geared up. We got 40 minutes to go from the start and decide what shoes I'm gonna wear. Vaporflies, these are these are old. I've a lot of miles done on a marathon, a couple of marathons maybe. And uh, I might freshen it up with these. But um, they're a little bit heavier and the laces are not good. So the wind is starting to come in, but it's not too bad. It's not as bad as it was before. I had it worse before when it turns to a real tactical race, five miles of Try not to go too red and then you turn at the five mile mark and the race really begins. The last time I raced here I ran my PB 52, 31 I think. I got into a little battle with um, Cairn Collins with about 5k to go and the two of us kind of pushed each other on and we were fighting tooth and, toot and nail till the, the finish line and he just pipped me. But uh, I had a good race and I got a PB so hopefully I might get lucky today that we end up falling in with a good group and um, everyone kind of works and helps each other because it could easily go single file here going into that wind and if it does I don't want to be at the front of it. <laughs> but um, half an hour to go, I suppose I better get warmed up and um, I'm ready to run hard enough today anyway. I, I didn't before. The last couple of races like I didn't know so I was only coming back and I did I think 54 for the last 10 mile race so I was hoping to get my lactic threshold up around 520 maybe 515 but 515 is PB pace I don't think I'm gonna get near that today but um hopefully I get um get closer to 53 than 54 I'll be happy then consider it a good day and 
might give me some confidence going to Tokyo. So we better get warmed up and go up and get started and get ready to go out or go home, as they say. <laughs> Block the win for the first five miles. Holy <laughs> <laughs> cow, key cool, cool. They play yourself properly with Limerick accent. <laughs> oh, delighted with that now. Massive PV and a bit more belief. I might have, might have got close to the winner. I had about 30 seconds behind, and uh, from the five mile mark, I pushed on and I got within touching distance of him, but not enough, not enough. Here we go. Best runner in Limerick. Right here, the best runner in Limerick. He's a Limerick man. He's actually he's actually a Limerick man. He's a Limerick. He's coming down to show me. This man, when I was only starting off in the Martin, I never seen a fellow to pace Martin like him. Only you've got faster to the high stage the same. I learned from him. Thank you very much. <laughs> well done, Where's Fordford? They always have the they always have the best goodie bag. Well done, lads. Yeah. Oh, sorry, you'll fit me. You're on camera now. Oh, gee. But we've got medium. They're medium. I'll take a medium, so. Yeah. Is that big enough? Oh, sorry, John Chelsea. I think he's small. He's small. I think I meet him, so he's definitely smaller than me. <laughs> yeah. Woo! John Tracy, 10 miler. We're back. With the up there. So, what's going on? Just back from a couple of miles on the hills. 17 and a half to be precise and two hour long one which is what I wanted to do because I won't be able to do it in the next couple of days because my partner's working evenings and if I want to do something long I have to get up really early in the morning which I don't like doing because um, I find it hard enough to sleep as it is and um, I like to get my lions in the morning and I said I'm going to do it today on tired legs but my legs feel actually good um, I had a good run in the hills legs feel very good and now I'm just going to recover for the next couple of days and get to next weekend which is three weeks out the big weekend but I don't know if I'm going to do 16 miles of marathon pace this time because um, I just did 10 at 5.12 
which is a lot better than what I was hoping to be honest with you a 30 second PB and I had a brilliant race and um, I was a couple of seconds off from getting the win and I probably would have been the most unlikely winner of the Waterford um, West Waterford, Dungarvan, John Tracy, 10 Mile, whatever, whatever you want to call it but it's a brilliant race, it's my favourite race and um, I love the history of the race especially named after John Tracy and he went on to win the World Cross Country Championship twice, he did it in 1979 for a second time in Limerick and he did it in Green Park, it used to be the old Limerick race course and I remember going there as, as a kid with my dad watching the races back in the early 80s and um, you know I, I, to, be, to come so close to have one name on that um, prestigious trophy it's mad to even think about it, it, it it's kind of like that Desi Linden in Boston Marathon moment you know if you turn up to enough races you know sometimes things might work out for you and um, you, you might shocking you might end up shocking a lot of people but it wasn't to be a game second <clears throat> like i said 30 second pb and uh finished really good and uh congrats to Oshin, um who i'm sure is going to have a good career ahead of him young lad and stepping up in distance and uh it'll be um it'll be exciting to see what he can do in the future for me to go and get a pb is um really good it gives me a lot of confidence now for tokyo i was saying that i wanted to get to my lactate threshold to be around 515 and um around 512 yesterday so um i i got it up to where i wanted to be so i think in terms of my fitness in terms of my uh, speed and my in strength endurance i i don't think i can do any more just um get it right and get there fresh and uh, hopefully everything goes well and um, next week um, we'll tell a lot I suppose whether I do that 16 is another thing I'm going to do my last kind of long run and um, I've did a lot of um, two hour plus runs and a lot of time on my feet runs I haven't really done too many longer than 20 mile long runs but as you've seen from my last um, video log in Chicago when I didn't do any long runs I ran 2.32 and I think um, with my training, if you've been seeing it on Strava, there's going to be a lot of, um, had a lot of doubles, a lot of doubles on third legs, you know, marathon pace on third legs. And when I do that then, when I'm training, like I said, in the in the tempos and I put on the vaporflies, I always get that little vaporfly kick and uh, I feel strong and I feel fast. And that race has actually given me a lot of confidence and it worked out well for me, you know. So 5.15. Um, can't really do no more in terms of my fitness now. Just don't do anything stupid. Don't do anything silly. And um, I'll decide next weekend what I'm going to do. Because as you know, I don't have a plan. I don't follow plans. I just um, walk it around my life. And um, right now it's um, time to recover from these two kind of heavy days. For the next three, four days maybe. Um, I'll probably do something Friday or Saturday. We'll see and um, I'll just take it one day at a time and the next couple of days are all, all recovery, easy runs and um, hopefully um, nothing kind of um, comes at me <laughs> you know, hopefully I don't get any niggles I think um, I came away feeling strong yesterday so I have no complaints and um, I knew going into the race that I wasn't feeling bad and you know when you're training for a marathon you never feel good you're, you always feel that fatigue and you always feel tired I think that's normal like but I think the only way you kind of give yourself some positive feedback is if you go out and do a race when you kind of get out of your comfort zone and you have other runners around you and um, that's why I like putting races in my um, my plans and my schedules because you know it gives you a bit of confidence like and after running that yesterday now it shows that I don't need to um, I don't need to improve too much give myself a chance of um, running a fast time and um, in terms of resting like my strategy was was like always in the John Tracy isn't it you're against the wind so you have five miles of a kind of a headwind and then the race begins and um, anytime I've ran and ran a PB there that was my strategy and um, it, I was lucky enough to fall in with a good group with um, Mossy Bracken and um, Pat Fischel from West Waterford we were all kind of taking turns. Anytime I was going into the wind, like I knew not to panic even if I'm running 5.30 a mile because 
um, you're running straight into the, the head wind like and the last time I ran a PB I, I ran my slowest mile would have been 535 there but the lads um, the lads weren't happy with my pace so they were, they were passing me out and we were all kind of pushing each other on so I suppose um, Mossy and um, Pat Fitz like um, you know they deserve a bit of credit so thanks for making a, a good group and um, kind of pushing each other on because um, I, I, I ran a PB and um, it was thanks to the lads as it was from keep me on my toes like and um, we were all kind of battling for third I, I, I just thought first and second are gone I, I never even thought in a million years that I was going to be challenging for the win and um, when, when I made my move at the five mile mark um, I just found that I was getting close to the guy in second and after about 10k I ended up passing him and I said if I'm going to pass him I have to go hard like just to shake him off and I, I, I passed him on a downhill, a fast downhill part and um, um, I think I got a, a nice little gap in him on that downhill and then I, I set my sights on O'Sheen who, who was um, looking behind um, I seen that he was definitely Definitely hurting a bit, but he's he's found didn't fall apart. He looked like like he was running five in a miles, but he looked like he was just jogging. And um, I was thinking if if these hills come and uh, he's hurting, uh, that's my chance to catch him. Like, but we got up to the top of the hill. Maybe I think about after nine miles, and um, I was getting very close to him, but I ran out of hill, so <laughs> I couldn't reel him in anymore. And um, the last couple of turns, I kind of. Um, Kind of broke my momentum. I think if the finish had been um, longer and straighter, I would have um, I would have finished very strong. But I'm delighted with my my race. Like um, I wouldn't change anything. I'm delighted with it, and um, definitely gives me a lot of confidence. It was nice to meet all the other runners as well, and um, you know um, share stories of uh, training and stuff like that. And um, I missed the hall though. In uh, I missed the West Waterford. Um, kind of spread, you used to always have a good spread in that hall and I actually parked there at the start of the race as you can see and uh, I thought we would have been going back there after the race but we didn't so it was um, a bit of an anti-climax but it was good to meet all the, the other runners anyway and um, have um, have the chats as they say and um, it gives me a lot of confidence so that's four weeks to go and I can't really do too much I can do I can do bad things alright and, and um, sabotage everything but I'm not going to do that um, my, my philosophy now is to get there fresh um, I know I can run fast if I'm fresh I did it in Chicago um, if you give yourself you know if you have enough freshness going to these marathons you'll be able to fight when the going gets tough like whereas if you're going in and you're overtrained you know when when things start hurting like there's no way back like even mentally and physically but if you're going in fresh and um, feeling strong you can push through that hurt and um, I think my training has been going pretty well you know this race um, yesterday was vindication of um, all those kind of double heart sessions I've been doing and uh, that's that's what I'm most happy about with that race yesterday that um, I, I finished very very strong like you know running um, just just sneaking under a sub five minute mile for my last mile if you asked me before the race if I would um like what would I run the five k? I would I wouldn't say I'd be able to run close to five minute pace like and here you know my last couple of miles were five oh two five oh eight five oh seven and and four fifty nine you know I ran I ran um Strava says I ran the last ten k in thirty two twelve like which is um you know my second fastest ten uh, k so you know that's good that's that's a good confidence builder for me I felt like I could keep running you know I if I ran I think another 5k at 5.30 pace, which I, I felt I would be able to do, I'd be well under the 70 minute mark for the half marathon. So they're, they're good indicators um, at this point with four weeks out. So hopefully just keep keep fresh and um, keep building on this. Um, I've got one really key week to go. So maybe a race, a long run and uh, a session and then we're done. And then it's all about just getting there fresh and hopefully um, everything else kind of falls into place and you can't do no more then you cannot do no more and then into Tokyo and get that six star medal around my neck and um, it'd be nice to go there in good shape I always said uh, I always give my best like 
at the start of this training block I didn't think I would get myself into this shape but you know my, my body my body's held up well, you know. I I still I still don't have confidence turning very fast or hard. It's just um I feel like an articulated truck if I'm turning too fast and uh, that's what kinda got me in the turn just uh, and that's why I've been staying away from the, the cross country and stuff like that. And you know, going into Tokyo, it has a lot of turns. There's a lot of dog leg turns and I think it has three or four of them and there's one or five kid to go. And I just find turning um trying to restart again it just it just um it just I just find it hard to get going. And that's the only thing now take to take away from yesterday that I'm looking forward to Tokyo and thinking, you know, that could um that could um come against me. So my plan if I am going to do my last session will definitely factor in turns like that and um, you know do some Martin Pell stuff and um, practicing my drinks and practice um, going around dog leg turns like that just to just to get used to it like and see see how much um, how much it kind of slows me down and at least at least practice getting back into a rhythm after doing it like and you know do only way do only way I can do that is to do it here in my training and uh, just get just get ready for it mentally. So if you've been following my training, you'll see it on Strava and um, follow me on Instagram as well at Limerick Running. And uh, hopefully, I will see all you guys again down the line. And um, maybe next week at the other race, I seem to have a bit of luck every time I take my GoPro with me. I get on a podium. Um, I did it in Poland a couple of years ago. I won loads of races. And uh, I have a bit of luck this year as well. <laughs> Any time I take it with me, um, I have a good race. I think anyway. So you know, um, before going into this race, I was thinking if I get close to fifty three, because I really didn't think I I would be able to run that fast. And I I knocked two minutes off my last ten mile time, like which shows that the last one, the last races were a bit hilly, and um, you know I just didn't have that um, strength yet. But now I do. And um, it's all about keeping it bottled up till we get to Japan. So that's um, four weeks to go, and I'll see you guys next week for another video. And uh, any questions about my train or anything, just let me know. Throw them into the comments there, and um, I'll try answer them as much as I can. And I uh, hope training is going well for you guys as well. And I will talk to you again next week. Kanijiwa. <laughs>